I've been looking forward to this moment, man. I've been a fan from a distance. I've tried to draw you in. I've tried to use common friendships to try to get closer. I've leaned on Ken I've leaned on Kenny Beats more than once to try to make the connection. That guy's been practically useless in that yeah, job. That's what I tell him. I try to tell him that all the time. Good to see you, bro. How are you holding up? How's life? I'm holding up well. Life is good. Life is great. Um I just like got back from this trip and I, I went to like Idaho and um I had a lot of time to think about everything. Why? The scenery is beautiful. There are things that like, it, it's like there are pastures and valleys and giant lakes and trails. And I don't know. It's great there. I love it. How was it actually getting away from all that and just kind of leaning into space and leaning into a meditation rather than staying indoors in a city, which is kind of fucked up? Intense. It was intense. I haven't done something like that in a while. I mean, in a long time probably since I started making this album. It's been years since I really sat with myself and like dug deep. So I was, there was, I had some moments, I had some breakdowns, but um, good time over all together. I feel good. I've had some really important conversations this week with a lot of people that, you know, in my life that I just needed to have kind of, and um, that's like moved me forward. I'm ready to start doing, I'm starting my second album. And it's sounding amazing. I've been making music differently. I write differently. I play the piano better now. For some reason, I don't even know what it is. Did you enjoy leaning in and not feeling like you had to just keep putting song after song out? That you had this chance to like make a body of work? Yeah. When I sat back and thought about it, like all the uh, resources that I had and like the things that I could do to get it done, I was like, I, I found myself taking things for granted as well. I was like, damn. Back in the day, I could never do this. Like hiring like an orchestra or whatever. You know, I had like people come in and do crazy things for me and i was like wow this is just unfucking real man <laughs> the places that we can take it yeah it's funny you know as someone who suffers from anxiety and has done through my whole life i really actually found the whole conversation you and kevin had really insightful because it was super transparent and open a lot of times that stuff just gets cut it's like oh we'll just start the interview once you've been able to take a breath and i love the fact that you were just like nah man like we're just going to keep this in very kevin thing to do I would definitely leaned into those things, like the anxieties and stuff like that. Those are good for songwriting, as Future would say. <laughs> I did. Lean, there's a lot of songs on there that are just made of anxiety, just built on <laughs> those feelings. Do you listen to your own music? Are you a fan? Are you able to just to, to divorce yourself from the process and actually be a fan of what you've made with your friends? When I first make it, I'm like a narcissist. Like I will listen to it a million times. The next couple of days, over the next couple of days, when I start to realize things, I become like self-loathing and it's like really crazy to switch up. You'll see. My my manager's always like, damn, that's fucking nuts, dude. How you literally loved it. And now you're like, you feel this extreme about it. So yeah, I'm hot and cold with that. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I mean, I always felt it was really sad, you know, when artists would, would say to me, I can't listen to my own music. I'd be like, that's almost a sadness. The part that the musician gets to enjoy, though, is the, the, do, the making of it, like the journey, the output, you know, element of it, the like letting it go and put, giving it to someone else. I guess that's the whole point. So, you know, you said something in there that was really interesting, which was, I mean, first of all, you shared more about your background than, than, and, your, and your life story than, than we'd ever heard before. I ever yeah, have, yeah. Yeah, yeah. which yeah. obviously makes people infinitely more interested but you did it in a controlling way which i thought was great and then um you also said thank god i can make music because ain't nobody hiring me to do anything else anymore <laughs> it's so true yeah i just wondered kind of like you know at what point that dawned on you uh whether it was that the time that you spent in prison or whether or not you even realized before that that, that ultimately your passion for music was was a linear experience yeah i mean i never really that i didn't put those together as soon as i got like you know, I've always been looked at as pretty much, it's, it's, it felt like growing up in my town, like I always had these like tattoos and these colorful hair and these like, you know, eyes, like it, it felt like I always had that the way that people treated me. So this really didn't make much of a difference. I think after I'd made a couple songs that I really liked, you know, that I'd sat and like cried over and showed people and they'd felt the same way. There was probably a shift in me where I was like, well, this is the only thing I can do. Everything else is just like, you know, it's not going to matter. I love it. Um, okay, we're going to play Jimmy Stack. I know that there's a personal relationship there now as well. Well, first of all, a really good friend. Like, you know, Jimmy's like, a, he's now my, like a really good friend of mine. So I definitely got that out of it. Um, he's taught me so much in our sessions because we just work a lot. It's like me and him, you know, I'll pull up and he teaches me like, to, you know, he doesn't like, dude, <sighs> There's a lot of producers that don't even like use instruments. They'll just be like direct people. And, and I'm like, that's 
tight. <laughs> so he conducts. He ultimately he can he conducts he conducts people and get and gets the best possible result. Right. And he's also like me in the way that he'll take a project home and he needs to be alone and by himself and no one's looking at him. And then he'll send you like what his thoughts are. And I love that. You like your own company, eh? I just don't want to put it on other people all the time. Like I could be around people all the time, other people. I just feel like sometimes they need a break from me. What do you think it is about yourself that, that it, it, hypothetically speaking, is causing that need for the space? The fact that I can literally be around humans forever, like I said, like <laughs> the fact that I could just, I don't know. Sometimes I just feel like it's a lot for people and I feel like they need their alone time. I don't know. So. You seem to me, like you said, like you said, you know, you seem to me to be someone who's a people person, like, you know, I, 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 kind of, I kind of wonder as a child, um, when you were growing up, um, how that was, how that was received. You talked a little bit about the hair and the eyes and feeling like you stood out even as a young kid. What do you think that was? Partially the like class system that, you know, was like, it was like a whole class. What is it called? Like a hierarchy. Yeah. Like that. Partially that, um, partially my family's reputation. Like, I feel like my family's always had a crazy reputation that I had to carry around with me. Like as you were going through that and realizing that this is the situation that you're in, but you also strike me as being a very sort of loyal, empathetic human being. And I wonder how that was. That was a constant struggle. Yeah, being empathetic and all that. Having, you know, the people I love being the ones that are like, you know, I don't know almost bringing this kind of toxicity that was like present in my life. So, no, there was a lot of gut-wrenching moments, dude. We could make a movie out of it. Who are some of the other people that you connected with? I know you've been you've been establishing this. I mean, you know, everyone wants to talk about Kenny Beats. I mean, I can hate that guy, but we should spend a little time talking about him. Jesus, can we not talk about? Him? <laughs> yeah, I mean, me and Kenny, like Kenny, helped me in so many ways making this album. We actually have we made a lot of songs that didn't really even make it to the album, but like the ones that we did make are like wow. And uh, he gives me good advice. Kenny's like um, you've talked to him. I, I, He's a grown up. <laughs> Exactly. He's a grown up. He gives me good ass advice. And uh, that's the way he helps me the most. You know, you've taken the opportunity to go away and to sort of collect your thoughts and to move through some times and grow personally. Um, but you're about to release this body of work, which you've spent a long time, three years making. And um, I sort of I sort of wonder, like, have you sort of adjusted your expectations a little bit in terms of what you can do? Um, to support this record in. And is it exciting to you? Is it daunting? Have you figured it out? Not figured it out? I mean, what does putting music out at the end of July mean? it's all the same it's all this it's like all the all at once i don't know i'm I'm getting so many feelings like a lot of anxiety definitely happy about it super relieved also scared but like, you know today though i don't really you know today's like a new day I, since i got back to my home i'm telling you smooth sailing did you go out there did you get yourself into like a traditional meditation experience or was it just literally like switch off and was it just you and like like what was set the scene for us I just, I don't know, I went out there with a couple people that I didn't really know very well, to be honest with you. That's cool. I did by the end of it, by the end of it. I know, that's exactly, yeah, it was, I just put myself in weird situations. You know, you're the kind of artist that to me, somebody as a writer and as a creative that I feel falls into this kind of really unique, modern space that has been kind of carved up by Tyler Frank said, Mac, Cuddy, just great artists who came out and put their honesty and their anxieties on the table, but also just were super rad. Like didn't be didn't bury themselves in it. Was still like, this is the, this is me and this is culture. You can you can ex you can exist with both. Are those the kind of people that that you were listening to when you were so sort of trying to find your voice? No, those are definitely. Definitely people that I was listening to trying to find my voice, especially Frank. Yeah, especially Tyler. You already know. What was your first impression when you met him? Like, what, 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 what was that experience like? Because he, he likes to put you on the back foot in order to work out where you stand, I think. I know. He'd be doing that. Uh, I forgot the first time I met him. I think I was, like, eating with somebody. He rolled up on me. He always with me. But he scared the shit out of me the last time I saw him. I was, like, in New York. It was, like, after or before one of my shows. And like, he just, I was talking to someone and it's in New York and it's dark, you know what I'm saying? And he like, I don't know. He put some shit in my back. He was like, give me all your, and he has a deep ass voice. And I don't know. I didn't know he was in New York. And shit. Like, give me all your money. And I was like, oh my God, what the fuck? And then uh, I turned, he turned around his tall ass. I'm like, yo, Jesus Christ. I was low key hot. I was like, dog. 
Where do you stand right now in the idea of, of collaborating? Now your album is done. I have been picky about it. Also been more open about it. What I really like is collaborating with like instrumentalists, producers. Whenever I co- like collab with, it's rare that I get in the room with another artist and we're making a song. Every time I get in the, you know, I like to meet artists, but I have done some pretty big collabs recently. Like who? Like who you've been working with? What's the name? I did. I did with Slow Tyler. Hard. Uh, MK MKG. Do you know yep. him? Um. Oh damn! I have a secret one, but I can, I'll tell you later. Okay. Give us a clue. It's a rapper. As a rapper. It's a rapper. It's a rapper. <laughs> How do you find uh, living in Los Angeles? Coming from the other side of the coast. Ups and downs. Every day is the same. The food's good. Sometimes the people suck. Sometimes they're yep. fun. The beach is not the beach it is in Florida. Although Florida is bad for me too right now. Why can't you be in Florida? Dude, it's the first of all. Well, I need to be. I just got my mom a house there, so I would love to go be there. My family's there. That's amazing. It's like the Corona epicenter. Yeah, it's awesome. I'm so happy about that. So you've been able to 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 afford to put your family into a more secure situation through art. Yeah, which is fucking nuts. Don't, don't take me there. That's crazy. That's amazing. When I when I realize that you're in a situation to do that and arts enabled that fact, that is just like, that's incredible, man. <laughs> And you had to do that remotely. I, I didn't even get to look at the house. I was just crazy. I just like got a, like a virtual view. My mom's like, I like it. I'm like, okay. And then we did it. So I haven't been there. I want to. It has a pool. I don't have a pool here. And that one has a pool. Do you like the idea of coming home? Does Florida feel good to you when you go home? Given that it's, it's, it's a place that, that, is, that, is, that has been mixed, but mixed experiences, right? Yeah, for sure. I mean, it depends. I, I, I do like going home. I, I'm so, you know, when I get there, I'm like, oh, wow. You know, even when I come here, like, you know, the feeling when you came home from school and you take your backpack off and you know, you're home, you feel lighter. I don't really get that all the time here. When I'm in Florida, that's like the real, you know, I really get that feeling. I'm like, oh, I'm home. And I know all the people. I feel like Drake in Toronto when I'm fucking in Florida. Yeah, I know all the good food too. Cuban food. I miss Cuban food, dog. RIP Cuban food. As a young artist, as somebody who kind of makes, you know, who, who chooses when you work, picks and chooses your moments, has to stay self-motivated in order to create and complete, right? Nobody's putting you on a clock. You're not, you're not being paid by the hour, um, you know, and, and, you know, you've got a lot of internal, dis- you know, discussions to have with yourself in order to get the art out. Um, what's your relationship like with distractions and with that stuff? Love and hate. Love and hate for sure. I was talking about that with someone really important to me. I don't know. I'm 24 years old, man. So I'm just going to do me for now. I want to look like like Pharrell when I'm like old. So like, I'm going to stop, you know, because I don't want my skin to sag. I don't want that big red Florida man nose. Like we're going to finish with Bow Wow, bro. It's been nice to make the connection at last. Um, And, you know, to, 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 for real, it really was. It was a pleasure. Yeah, though. man. And listen, I mean, I, look, I know there's a lot. You said, you know, you want there's, there's a lot to talk about. And um, the album's coming into July. And however we land, if maybe maybe we land closer to that and we get a chance to dive into that track for track. I'd love to do it again. But in the meantime, man, thanks for thanks for letting us, you know, um, dance around a fountain a few times and just get to know you a little bit better. Um, really respect the music that you make and appreciate it. Love.